Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. increase you in all that is good, bless you and your community. And I thank Allah for allowing me to come and be with you tonight. And I thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for giving me such beautiful brothers and sisters in Islam and for our guests as well to be here with us. Before I go any further, what I'd like to do is a little inventory check to find out how many Muslims do we have with us tonight. If you raise your hand, I'd like to see how many Muslims are here. Whoa. Well, let's go the other way then. How many non-Muslims do we have with us? Any non-Muslims here tonight? One? Did somebody see one? Where? We do have one, right? Huh? I wonder how it feels to be surrounded by all these terrorists. Anyway. <laughs> Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. The subject tonight, I'm going to kind of jump right at it, is one that I really feel strong about, is being able to communicate what's beyond the differences. And the first thing to do is to talk a little bit about what is Islam, then how it is different from other things, and then what's beyond that? First and foremost, I always like to do what's called etymology. And that's where you take the words down to the core or to the root to understand what they mean, where they come from, and then it makes it easier for people to understand what you're saying. If you work in the medical profession, there are certain words that you understand, and you understand them in a way that maybe a layman wouldn't understand it that way. If you work as a mechanic in a shop and you're talking about certain things about an automobile, then again, someone not familiar with the trade would be confused and maybe get the wrong idea. And so it's the same when we begin to talk about Islam. And the reason for that is because Islam is in Arabic language. Not just the Quran, but everything related to it. The word itself, Islam, it's not an English word. It stayed in Arabic. Nobody translates it. So let's do that. Let's begin with that. What is Islam? And a lot of times, those who maybe they mean well, but not really skilled in translating or giving an idea to the folks, they'll say, what is Islam? They say, it's peace. Islam is peace. We won't argue that there's peace with Islam. Nor would we argue that the word peace is actually in the word Islam, but Islam itself doesn't mean peace. Otherwise, when I greeted you, I would have said, Islam alaikum. And of course, you wouldn't do that. Salam alaikum. Okay. What is Islam? So let's take the word. The root is sin, lam, mim. Those are the three letters for the root. And silm if you want to try to pronounce the root, nobody does that. Aslam, Taslim, Istislam, and Salam, etc. All of these are coming from this. Now, if you don't know Arabic, you're going, what's he talking about? In English, it might be better to translate the meaning as surrender, submission, obedience, sincerity, and peace. These are verbs or actions. Religions, for the most part, are named after a person, a place, or a thing. They're nouns. So those who are not 
acquainted with this will think that Islam is the same way. It's a noun, whereas it's not actually, it's a verb. It demonstrates really what you're supposed to be doing. What are you supposed to be doing? And it implies that you're surrendering your free will, your choices, to the one who has the big will over everything, which would be God in the English language, Dios in the Spanish language, or Allah in the Arabic language. Now, some people might say, well, I don't believe that the word Allah actually means God. And you know what I'm going to tell them? You're right, because it means a lot more. In the English language, they have a word for things that are worshipped. It's called gods. Anything can be worshipped. An object of worship could be a chair, a tree, a rock, a stick, a stone, a bone, a concept, a person. All of these things could be worshipped. They're called gods. But is there a word in the English language to denote the one and only true God? And they say, of course there is. What's the word? God. Isn't it spelled the same way? Yeah, but it has a big G. Well, I can't tell if you're talking to me. I guess you'd have to say, I'm talking about big G-O-D. Because English actually is very deficient in many ways when we begin to talk about belief and especially in religion. However, Arabic is the opposite. It's very, very adapted to this subject of belief in religion. I'd like to give you a little insight into that. There is a word in Arabic that exactly describes the word G-O-D, God. It's called Elah. Not Allah, Elah. Elah, that means a God. It can be a God, or you can say the God, Al-Elah. That means the God. Like that is the God that the man worships, that tree over there. It can be made plural, aliha. That's the plural, more than one. In English, all you do is go tss after a word, and that's the plural, tss. God, tss. Rocks, chairs, tss. Cars, you just make the sound of a snake after something and that means more than one. In Arabic, the word is built in a way that when you make it plural, there's no mistaking what you're saying. It's very clear. If you say book in English, okay. But in Arabic, you say kitab and kutab. Kutub is the plural of kitab. You're not going to make a mistake when you hear it. You know he meant more than one book. And if you said masjid, in English, mosque. Tss. But in Arabic, masajid. Right? Hand, tss. in English, yad or yadain. Right? Or is that two? How many of you know? What's the infinite number? Do you know how to pronounce it? It's a trick question. It's the same word. Yeah, they ain't. It stays the same. Anyhow, come back to our subject. The word Allah comes from Elah, but when it reaches this perfected state, it cannot be made plural. The word Allah can't be plural. It's always singular. There's no way to change it. Nor can you give it male or female gender. 